You ready? Uh, are we recording? I think so. Yeah, I think we're just rolling the whole. Oh, thing. <laughs> right, oh, right on. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was an adventure. Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Oh my goodness, we've all gathered here. Bonnie. Hello. Brett. Hello, friend. Bryce. Hi. Cousin Bonnie. Hello. <laughs> the Uncle Brett. Hey there, guys. <laughs> Uh, Grandma Bryce. <laughs> Hello, Sonny. I'm uh, glad to dog, be here on the dog podcast. Money. <laughs> woo hoo, woo hoo, woo hoo. <laughs> Kitty cat. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. <laughs> and Granddad. Oh, Sonny, it's. Oh. Uh, I just assumed we were going in a circle. <laughs> Thought we were doing a bit. Thought it was a whole pattern. It was a My good bad. Bit. <laughs> no, it's actually very, I wasn't very looking. symbolic that everybody was working on that bit except for me because <laughs> this is the reason why we're getting best ups. <laughs> because I fucked everything up by leaving the country. So. Is it or you took care of your mental health and are having a rad time right now? Yeah, that's what we're hoping. No, I'm probably <laughs> going to be sad. You're like, no, Amsterdam's on the list mm. <laughs> yeah i don't do vacations I, I actually don't i hate vacations yeah i really, really don't like them if it weren't for ashley i would not go on them yeah but they're really good you're gonna come back with many stories mm -hmm. that you're, probably you're doing work yeah no i, I probably I, I have a hard time letting go of 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 working I don't trust vacations. You're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna do man on the street interviews and ask what people think about Trump over there, mm -hmm. aren't you? Well, I, if Not you were, anymore. If you were to describe <laughs> hell, like if you were to, to, to describe mm. a Dante's fucking inferno, that would be uh, one of the inner rings of me doing man on the streets and and soliciting European opinions about Trump. Uh, what, uh, I can think of about two. I just don't no, know why I, you guys. I, I, I can think of two things for which I don't care about the most. Oh, European oh. opinions and Actually, opinions of, in general about Donald can, Trump. Can, can I make a request? Yeah. Uh, just say, can you do an impression of any American political figure? And then just get somebody will give you a decent Bernie Sanders. Somebody will still be doing a Ronald Reagan. I somebody think, yeah, be it'll be mostly Trump and and probably some George W. Bush. Because I've found in general, Europeans really only have two American accents, and it's a Southern accent and a Valley girl. I, I want to hear yeah. all of them. Those are those are the two that they, so they're like, howdy, y'all, I'm a cowboy. Or like, like, oh my God. God y'all. I'm grody to the max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gag me with the steer. <laughs> okay, now you're talking about where I grew up. That's how we sounded. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, what you're about to hear is secret, locked, bonus-only content. Yes, that now is being unlocked on uh, the main feed, so hopefully you guys can enjoy it. Uh, of course, uh, if you were on patreon.com slash great night, you might have already heard this, and you're getting a fresh episode this week. So, fresh bones. Uh, this would be right. a good time to uh, head on over there if you want some fresh content. We will be back in... August with our regular live shows. Until then, enjoy the unlocked content. Mm. Also, we call it Bones. We call it Bones. We call it Bones, and I don't think that'll come up. I, but <laughs> we will probably pick episodes that are that we call it Bones. We're, yeah, we're going to call it Bones. Bones. And don't explain Bones. Right, but it's called Bones. It's called Bones. It's called Bones. <laughs> I think we're rolling now, right? Did oh, you yeah, did you did you sneak rolling. roll? We've good. been rolling, so it's always a good to... good sneak roll. It looks like a secret box there. <laughs> 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 Is a uh, clown gonna pop out? <laughs> <laughs> right. Here, let's start with a little bit of housekeeping. At the beginning of Tuesday's episode, Bonnie had just texted me a headline about a uh, school board member in uh, our local <laughs> district. You want to start? You don't want to introduce our guest first. Well, I mean, we can. We can go straight. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like we got. Yeah, I was very surprised because the first question we asked was: This dude stripped down to a swimsuit while giving a speech. We knew it had something to do with masks, and the question was pro or against. And oh we, yeah, we both bet that it was against. It was against. Yeah. Spoiler alert: It was pro. It was pro mask. Yes, he was making a pro mask statement by stripping, by taking off all of his clothes 
in the uh, school board meeting, which I'm sure Dad already appreciates. You're already <laughs> you're already in favor of. Uh, but but the speech was about how like, look, man, I don't like people telling me what to do, but occasionally you have to do what you're told, like stop at red lights, <laughs> yeah, and and other stuff. But his point was, look, uh, we know what the right thing to do is, and that's where our kids wear masks. Anyway, um, uh, that was that was a big surprise for me. Look this at morning. that, yeah, me too. Yeah, it's also it's also just now hitting like the the local news circuit, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if this dude is a household name. I feel like we're building up our civil war, our Avenger style civil war of people freaking out at public meetings, like <laughs> over the mask mandates, and it's like naked guy versus crying lady, like they're all fighting at an airport in Germany. Uh, well, I'll tell you one person who will not be freaking out, uh, and that is my dad. Welcome to the show, Dad. Well, thank you very much, Brian. Uh, so, and Justin. On- Sunday Thank night. You. It's it's a, it's an honor for you to be here on Sunday. Uh, yes, I'm so happy you got to see me. <laughs> <laughs> so on Sunday, uh, we were chatting, and uh, Dad mentioned something uh, about uh, when he was traveling, working for uh, Conoco in the uh, petroleum industry. And I was like, what did you do? And he was like, oh, I would give speeches, and then well, hold on, let me let me start here before just to set it up. For, for you to tell the real story. What did you presume your dad did? Like, uh, if I had asked you this question, what did your dad do? What would you tell me? Hold meetings. <laughs> well, like, that's that's all I could think of is like, I don't know. He put on a suit and he yeah. held. And he walked he was, in. He was briefcase. at meetings. Like, he probably was was doodling and uh, and and would and would raise his hand and say something 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 safety. Anyway, good good meeting, guys. So so you you would you would say he was in the safety element of the petroleum industry. As far as I as far, far as, as you I, know. as far as I knew, yes, yes, and and, uh, uh, and you've gotten to well, this stage in your life with that amount of knowledge. Yeah, well, well, uh, to Dad's they, credit, they actually thought I worked at a gas station <laughs> <laughs> for some amount of time. Yes, but but. It was transformative because when dad casually mentioned giving a speech at the Lions Club, like I, 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 I thought I was the first in the family to be a performer. And then I thought of you as a performer and I was like, my mind just got blown. And so now I want to hear the whole story. And uh, uh, just before we started this episode, we were talking about how the, 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 the a previous time you blew my mind was when you told us about the first time you got a television and I had to wrap my mind around the possibility that television could not exist in a human's life. Uh, uh, when was that? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, it was probably 58. You didn't get a TV until 58. Yeah, that's probably right. So, so you been, were, you were almost 10 years old. I was nine. Let's see. Yeah, that's probably right. I mean, there wasn't a lot to watch. What well, anyway. what what was that like? Well, it was uh, maybe it was sooner than that, but it was a more circular kind of screen and black and white, yeah. obviously. And in fact, I didn't really see the first color television until sixty two, sixty three, probably. And that was just like uh, what in a window uh, shop or a friend's? Yeah, yeah, of course, a uh, buddy of mine. Yeah, they started. The, uh, they started going color in with the late fifties, right? Like the networks started broadcasting in yeah. in, in color, but I think it, it probably took a few cycles of adoption to you know get color TVs to a, a price where people were able to just a random family would oh, put yeah. it in their house, and not the Rockefellers. <laughs> yeah, well, what, did, that's why we paid uh, twenty five hundred dollars for a TV. Big screen TV, not that long ago. Oh, I, oh, I was about <laughs> and, to say, like, there's no way you, you had twenty five hundred dollars to run around in nineteen fifty eight. No, uh, it wasn't that, but uh, it was uh, uh, it was expensive. Yeah, and uh, I was very. We were very fortunate. Uh, so before that, you're listening to like. Radio, like, do you have, you have your favorite like like uh, radio programs that you remember as a child? 
I remember buying my four, first record. Okay. It was a 45. Of who? It was the Everly Brothers uh -oh. saying, wake up, little Susie. Wow. <laughs> Damn. So you had, a, you, had a, you had a nose for the hits. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's uh, do do you remember any of the very first programs that you got into on television? Um, well, uh, the Howdy Doody show was on, but mostly I remember cartoons. Yeah, uh, and uh, so what was what was what was popping off back then, cartoon wise? What was what was the uh what was the move? Well, it was uh, uh, overture, curtain lights. This is it, the <laughs> night of nights. Yeah. No more rehearsing and nursing our part. We know every part by heart. <laughs> and it's the uh, Daffy Duck. Uh, yeah, Looney Tunes. Oh, really? Yeah. That was the Looney Tunes theme oh, song? Yeah, yeah. yeah, did you not know? Oh, no, this, oh, yeah. what a by, the time, by the time that I was consuming I, I, I was, Looney Tunes, everything had been kind of like cut up and re-commoditized into, you know, kind of short form. Everything so. was self-referential. Like. Well, I think it was just like, it was like Looney Tunes was on. And it was just like. <laughs> so all the, all the other lyrics cut and it was just the, the fanfare. And then we were just right into Bugs Bunny taking a wrong turn at Albuquerque. And Popeye, uh, there was a lot of Popeye cartoons. So uh, it's amazing how much sticks around. In oh, fact, yeah. I, I think that they're really, I don't know how much even the, 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 the 2D stuff kind of stuck around as soon as like, as soon as Pixar changed the game, I feel like kids cartoons just got the crappier version of 3D animation. And, and now I don't know. I mean, like you've, you've actually raised three kids recently so it's like do they they still watch 2d cartoons uh, oh certainly yeah yeah and, and uh, i mean it they're they're richer colors and they're better shading and all that stuff but, but it's not but, the same shorts that like like it, it's crazy that you were watching likely the same cartoons that i was watching as a child in the mid 80s <laughs> uh like like literally the yeah. exact same adventures of you know it was rabbit season duck season on that television as it was my television and now i wonder if that has endured uh, into into the 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 aughts or the tens. Yeah, I, I I'll tell you the biggest thing that surprises me is the depth of storytelling that my kids are watching on animated features. It's like or animated shorts even. Yeah. You know, it's like there's because so, it is new stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but yeah, two uh, D animation is is alive and well. Uh, so you you watch TV, you grow up, you go to college at Auburn University. That's correct. Uh, you uh, you get a degree in accounting. That's correct. At this uh, at this point, what what do you think at this point in your life your life track is going to be? Wait, hold on. We're going to skip right well, back college. You, Give me some wild oh, college no, stories. Man, no, he's got. <laughs> I've heard all. Okay, so this is funny. Oh, I have not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is funny because like I've, I've heard all these stories. All right, yeah. <laughs> Give me a wild college story. <laughs> I was a mezzanine jumper at the fraternity <laughs> a house. Mezzanine jumper, <laughs> not 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 a mezzanine jumper. The mezzanine, the jumper. mezzanine jumper. jumper. What what goes into being a mezzanine jumper? Well, we had a uh, fraternity house that was uh, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh wow! And it had great big uh, two story open area down below living room, mm -hmm. and then there was the first floor that had. Uh, wooden steps up to it, and I would get at one end of the corridor <laughs> and run and leap over <laughs> the hand the bar yeah. and land in the living room below. Gotcha. Wait, I thought. See, the version of the story I always remembered is that there was a hill that you had to go fast enough that you didn't drop to your death. Uh, is that not the case? You would just straight no. up jump from the mezzanine Leaping down to the living over room? over the railings. Uh, <laughs> into the living room. <laughs> now, are you trying to land on other fraternity brothers? Are you trying to land on, are you like, like, like delivering a, a big leg drop? Like... <laughs> Do you do you have a signature line? Like do you have a catchphrase as you as you come barreling over? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> just, people just knew it. Like, like it, it needed no introduction because here comes the mezzanine he, jumper. He, he, got, he got this wild look it's in his a, eyes. It's a plane. It's the mezzanine the jumper. Mezzanine jumper. <laughs> well, and I was. Uh, one of the only ones that could do it and come out uninjured. 
<laughs> oh, so so lesser what was beings. The secret? What was the secret to to a successful mezzanine jump? Because this think, does like I, it, I is, think, it, it does read very jackass. <laughs> like I think it stems from my uh, midget league football days <laughs> when the most fun part was getting tackled or tackling oh, somebody. So you, you, you had banged up bones that were accustomed to so the rough were, and tumble play. You were play. excited for contact. That's right. There we go. <laughs> uh, were you the? Did you invent the mezzanine jump, or was that like a thing of of legend? Like like they're all like a you know uh, legend foretells there, exactly. there will be one who can leap over the mezzanine. No, I think I was twenty the years first. you were the without first. a mezzanine you jumper. The mezzanine jump. Do you think that there was a mezzanine jumper after you? Did you inspire a I generation? Hope not. <laughs> I would love to believe it's a tradition that holds up to this very day. <laughs> that somebody writes us saying, uh, "Which uh, which fraternity was this?" Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, the uh, the house is gone. It got torn down. Oh, really? Yeah. Now it, anyone could uh, jump from that fire. Oh and no! So they could a, a fire in a fraternity house. Now yeah, I've heard what everything. A surprise, <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> uh, all right. So you, you, you yeah. It, it, any other college tales? Well, uh, so you thought you knew all of them? No, we got some new I details. Guess, yeah. No, I think I'll go back to the question of. Uh, oh, the, you were the, thinking uh, of one. Give me the one you were thinking of. Give me the one you were thinking of. That was, that was that's that moment where you're about to talk yeah, and you remember no, you're no, holding no. a Come microphone. On. Come on, <laughs> this is for the Patriots. It doesn't count. It's not even going out on the internet. Basically, uh, well, there was uh, the time that uh, a friend of mine had a uh, raccoon. <laughs> and it was, <laughs> Ranger, and uh, in addition to uh, chewing a hole in my convertible top on my, uh, uh, what were those things called? Was the it? Chevrolet rear engine uh, Corvair. Oh, okay. yeah, yes. okay. Yeah, I had a, a You had a Corvair, and your friend's raccoon chewed a hole through the top. That's right. And I... You know what's uh, funny? Because our friend... Andrew Maine, his dad had a pet raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so it wasn't Jamie Harder, was it? <laughs> no, no, that would different. Be, that would be amazing. <laughs> different, <yeah. laughs> it, uh, anyway, the raccoon ate through the side, so uh, you know, a little hole just big enough for him to poke his head out. Sure. <laughs> and uh, so I got a. Uh, you remember the hippie flowers? Oh, uh, brother, do I know the hippie flowers? <laughs> that's, I, I put the hippie, a uh, hippie flower over the hole. Over the hole? Yes. Okay. So I, I, I was expecting you to be like, I took that hippie flower and I shoved it down the throat of that <laughs> raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> Suffocated him there on the spot. <laughs> no, but I did intimidate uh, <laughs> the raccoon with my uh, double barrel. 12 gauge shotgun. <laughs> hey, the hey, raccoon hey. realized that was a deterrent. He, yes. he shouted, uh, Raccoon season. And he goes, yeah. Mezzanine jumper season. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I went to Auburn. Yeah. Yep, and I went to Auburn uh, because I thought I wanted to be an engineer. And Auburn was a land grant college like AM. So at the time, you had to take ROTC. Okay. So my oldest brother was in the Air Force, middle brother was in the Army. So I got in the Navy, uh, ROTC. <laughs> just, oh, just to that, round it out. Yeah, I was That's about to right. say, like, is, is that is that like a natural gravitational well where it's just like, well, I'm go, you already ruined two of the armed forces. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it was in the days of uh, the draft and the rest yep. of it, and so so either you picked one you wanted, or you were getting you were getting put in that, one you might not want. That's exactly right. And, and, and what what are your priorities at this point? I guess uh, Na Navy uh, for 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 a, an intractable swamp land battle seems like being in a boat would be a pretty good <laughs> uh, place to be. Just you know. Lobbing, uh, lobbing shells from the side. Yeah, I uh, I liked uh, I liked the aspect of being on the water. Yeah, and uh, anyway, I uh, so I had to decide after my uh, sophomore year whether I was going to commit to uh, re up and uh, and continuing the uh, ROTC program, and that was the year that they instituted the uh, lottery for the draft. 
Oh, this is when it's getting real, real. So, so yeah. you're thinking if like I can either keep going on this program and end up at a, a palatable spot or I could drop out and then just get my number picked yeah, and get right. shoved somewhere. How much are you aware of Vietnam as a college student in ROTC? Like, like uh, how oh. much you, are you aware of it evolving before it, like as it, I was like initially like a quagmire and then it, it builds. Uh, I just knew that uh, we had about 400,000 troops over there yep. and uh, I did not want to serve in an infantry kind of position. So I uh, get in, get I, in and, now. And so get a good I said, seat. you know, I'm not going to take a chance on being drafted. So that summer I committed to the Navy and then that fall they drew the lottery my number was three holy <laughs> cow so i said yes made the right decision on that yeah you're like get bent i'm already in <laughs> <laughs> and then the the war we began winding down uh, i graduated in 71 and got commissioned and they sent me out to san diego so, so this is the this is the part where it gets weird because 71, I, it's um, when you're a kid, you think that anything that happened before you were born is a million years before. Yeah. I now know what four years is. And the idea that this part of the story is happening four years before four I years was before Brian yeah, was born. Yeah, that's crazy. So uh, uh, but but uh, how long was the gap where you knew you dodged the bullet with uh, 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 by already being enlisted or signed up uh, and your number gets drawn and you're like, well, I'm, I'm just going to be a student. And then uh, 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 talk uh, like, is that two years of that or? Well, it was two years of ROTC and I had taken uh, a year and three quarters, I would say, of engineering courses. Gotcha. And I figured out I don't want to be an engineer. That's way too uh detail, way to uh, expectations. And what really did it was I had a drafting class. This is mm -hmm. in the day when you had T-squares and that kind of thing, in addition to slide rules. Yep. But uh, <laughs> I, an abacus. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it felt like it. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I just... Uh, I did the best work I'd ever done on a drawing, and I got a C for it. Uh -oh. And I said, I don't like that. Maybe maybe we're not naturally gifted in this particular uh, realm of life. That's right. And that and Fortran programming that I had at 7 o'clock in the morning, which does not go well for a partying-type guy. <laughs> I, mean, like, 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 I was just jumping mezzanine two hours ago. Like, how am I supposed to? to focus on this <laughs> so anyway i tried fortran a couple of times and decided well i don't need to do that <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, i had taken an accounting class you can, can four cram logical. your fortran <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm writing material That's for my good. dad before yeah. i was born no you're punching <laughs> him up <laughs> uh, so so uh this is all in in college and then you graduate to college you go straight uh, do you get any time off? I guess you get a summer off, and then. Well, no, not a, not the whole summer. I, I drove. I got. I had to report uh, July the fourth out in San Diego. So you take one tearful last jump into the mezz <laughs> off the mezzanine, <laughs> and then and now you're off to serve uh, serve America. Well, and now at this point, because uh, Auburn is in Alabama, and you uh, were born in Georgia, right? Um, is that all of the world you've seen is Southern Georgia in, in well, uh, East Alabama? Well, I grew up in Fort yeah. Walton Beach. Okay, so, so a little so, bit, but, yeah, but still we're talking Aston about area. a three-hour uh, circle. Right, a three-hour uh, drive to Auburn. Wow. And and so all of a sudden you're going to go to San Diego. Uh, do, do you have any memories of the anticipation of wondering what it's going to be like or your expectations or any of that? I just said, well, here we go. I got I got to go out there, and <laughs> I my uh, car blows a water pump in Midland, Texas. On the drive. <laughs> yes. Jeez Louise. And so I have to cash a check and go in to a local bank because there are no ATMs or yes. any of that kind of yeah. stuff. And, and at that point, you couldn't cash out your had, Bitcoin, so. Yeah, I, you know, I— 
he figured I was an officer, so it couldn't be too big a risk. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now, now are, are you immediately an officer, or you're telling? Uh, no, I was commissioned as an ensign. Okay, uh, so so, so after basically, the, the moment that, like, even before you left or showed up on base, you were already you had this station. Yes. That's okay. Right. And uh, anyway, so I end up driving into San Diego on July the fourth. And I go up and down these hills, and it's blue skies, 72 degrees, 20% humidity. I said, I ain't leaving. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to ask you. It was like, if your life was a movie, you're leaving this area of the South. That's like, right. If, if we're smash cutting to the moment where you're like looking around and you're like, like I'm not in Kansas anymore in yeah. Southern California, what is that moment? Is there like, are you out? at a bar are you by the beach are you or is it is that moment when you're driving well uh it's that moment when i was driving yeah and uh and then i went to the uh to get set up and the guy said well do you want to live in uh the boq or you want to live off base i said i don't know i guess i could live in the boq he said no Live off base. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Wrong answer. That's, that's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was at first disappointed with my orders because it was uh, San Diego shore duty. And I said, you Which know, means you don't even get on a boat. You just hang out in San Diego. That's right. I was I, on an admiral's I, staff as the communications officer. I was going to say, how quickly do you realize that that's the greatest gig <laughs> yeah. in the history of the military? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I don't even get to be on a boat. All I have to do is hang out on San Diego Beach. <laughs> but I actually did have command of a boat. It was uh, the admiral's... Uh, barge or his yacht essentially is gotcha. uh, that kind of thing had uh, two crewmen and my command to them was don't wreck it okay <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what you're doing right <laughs> yeah. how, how much uh, port and starboard are you learning uh, they, they, they're they like Morse code day one <laughs> yeah. here's an E I, time I, is uh, not <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and you won't believe this but I never had to learn Morse code a communications <laughs> officer in the Navy <laughs> <laughs> who just hung out in San Diego never got on a boat except for to tootle around with the Admiral <laughs> <laughs> never learned the, oh dad you you want it live? Yeah, it's, just, <laughs> it's just like the montage of him, just like the wind in his hair. All the leaves are, all the leaves are brown. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a pretty good deal. And I would, I would say, you I would, have to understand the wistful look in this man's eyes. As he is, he's transported back to a magical time. And then I lived up in a, uh, house up in Mission Hills, which overlooks yep. the airport, and you can see all of Point Loma, and just a gorgeous thing. It's a 1920s vintage house uh, with all antiques in it. Me and another guy rented it. It was two bedrooms, and uh, Do you remember the it rent? was $123 Good a month. God. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. <laughs> So it was good. It was a good time. Uh, well, so and how long do you spend uh, in 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 this phase? Uh, well, I get an early out in the from the navy because they had way too many people. So, so at this in point, the, the war, uh, yeah, the war is winding down yeah, at this absolutely. point. Yeah, yeah and uh, so after seventeen months. They offer me the opportunity. Well, they ask, is it, would anybody like to go ahead and get out? We and need I brave volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I uh, got out and did a little traveling up to Columbus, Ohio. And it Whoa, was. Whoa, this is a chapter I've never heard. Uh, like just road trip by yourself or with someone? Well, with uh, a couple of buddies. Yeah. Uh, and like San Diego's an amazing town. We want to see another exotic location. <laughs> Columbus, <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> well, and it's November. And it's 
It is miserable. It is dark and what gray. What brought you and... to Columbus? Uh, it was that Columbia. Uh, what's her name? Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, one of the guys I was with. His family was there or okay. something. I don't know. There is something about those early 20 days where all it takes is the question, uh, hey, we're going somewhere. And it's like, <laughs> Uh, you want to come? Yes. And then it's only you're just on we, the road. Wheels yeah. up. You're like, what the well, hell? Where we go? What the hell else am I going to do? So anyway, so I went back to San Diego after that trip. We went down to Fort Walton and all that. So you were just out there road tripping, visiting family and all that. Yeah. And then went back to San Diego and started collecting unemployment. <laughs> that, was okay. my, that was my next question. Was uh, was like, uh, where's where? Did you save a bunch of money for this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It. Uh, anyway, uh, there were there were obviously a lot of people looking for work uh, because the military was cutting back and that kind of thing. And, and also Diego, folks it, coming back yeah, home. And San Diego is a big military town, so yeah. it's like if people if if the military is shedding. Uh, uh, and uh, everybody roster, wants then, to yeah. say in San Diego. Exactly, and, and so so yeah. did I. And I interviewed a few times, and then uh, two weeks before my unemployment was running out, I went up to L.A. Funny, uh, for funny a job how that works. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you know nothing inspires creativity like a deadline. <laughs> sure, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so, so why L.A.? Just just because well, it, it was more opportunity big, town, yeah, big more town, jobs, big office, and there were two companies I interviewed with. One was the oil company, and the other was uh, an electronics firm, and uh, I opted for the uh, oil company. So, so job. you got offers from both, and and you well, it was, it was your choice. Ex- I went ahead and accepted the offer from Douglas Oil Company, gotcha. and yeah. let the other guys know I wasn't going to go that way. Now, yeah. at this point, when you uh, sign up with Douglas. Uh, how far into the gas crisis are is America at this I, point? I uh, joined Douglas on March fifteenth, nineteen seventy three, and that's the day of Nixon's wage and price controls. That's the marker date where you had to uh, you couldn't raise prices unless you could demonstrate that you had had cost increases that uh, had to be passed on to the consumer. Holy cow. And so uh, this is already a time, I assume, <clears throat> when there are gas lines and yes. people. So so uh, uh, this was one of the things that got me wanting to have this this discussion is uh, at a time when you're just seeing, you know, long lines. And um, as as my uncle put it, you know, if your tank was at seven eighths full, you'd pull over just to just to make sure you were topped off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just in case. If, if, if you saw a manageable line, like, like let's just squeeze it. Now. Just, I mean, a little and, in. and that's what happened. A lot of uh, the demand ended up being stored in people's automobile tanks instead of in big storage. Gotcha. And hence, we couldn't get the trucks to deliver because you couldn't keep pace with that it's, it's a li- cycle. It's a little bit like the, the the ridiculous toilet paper crisis we were having, where yeah. it's just like uh, just in time management works unless there's a panic on anything. Yeah, and then yeah. It, and then you run into trouble. So at this point, you sign up for Douglas Oil. D- do you know Jack about anything with petroleum at this point? Uh, not really. I got in through the back door. I mean, I, uh, I would never have been hired on campus or anything cause I don't interview with Auburn because why would they go all the way to <laughs> Alabama? Yeah, when they've got <laughs> Texas A&M and yeah. Texas UT petroleum and they focus on engineers and that kind of thing. But, uh, now your yeah. your degree is in accounting, but yeah. but they hire you for what? An accounting job. Okay. So I was uh, just an entry level accountant doing uh, product exchange accounting. You know, when uh, everybody doesn't have a refinery everywhere, they have a gas station. Yeah. So they borrow or trade gas from one location to the other. And so I did the accounting on keeping track of who owed who what and that kind of thing. And at this point, 
you are mid twenties and had, had you met mom yet? I met her in San Diego and, uh, so you'd met her, but you're like, uh, you well, seem pretty cool. I'm going to LA off and on. And there was a long off period when she <laughs> was, uh, Nervous about what she wanted to do, I guess would be a polite way to say it. Um, and, did, I, and I had where, to go where, to where, LA where, where, where did you meet her? What, what was, uh, yeah, you were, you were uh, bumming around San Diego or were you still in the military at that time? No. Well, I was at the end of my at the military end of, when I met When her. you met her. And what was she doing? She was uh, going to Coleman College for secretarial school. She had previously been a hairdresser and was certified, you know, with yeah. all that stuff. Anyway, and uh, well, so, so you guys, you guys are dating. Um, how close are we to the moment where you proposed to her at this moment, at this time? Seventy three. Uh, we date. We knew each other for about a year before we got married, and uh, uh, can 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 we share the story of you proposing? <laughs> To mom, <laughs> certainly. Uh, I, 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 this is like December fifteenth, okay. and in San Diego, and I got a buddy that's got a uh, uh, big uh, three ninety Ford engine, uh, fast boat, yep. and so race boat dragster. Gotcha. And we play, we go to San Diego into uh, Mission Bay, and uh-huh. I water ski and barefoot water skiing, and um, mm. a legacy. Uh, and, and, and yeah. It's early. Okay. It's early Justin's in the morning. still upset. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. It's just you know Brian trying to uh, pedal this horse shit that like he's like oh I don't know I don't know but barefoot water ski I barely done it I have barely done it and we're on we're doing this VR thing and he's like I, I, it's it's the easiest thing in the world I like look I'm pretty good at it I've maybe jeez ah, can't even count on one hand how many times I've done it and the next thing you know he's out there doing backflips on the water like he's eating he's making and eating a sandwich like and I can't even get on my feet and I'm like uh, it's just like like oh really mm. Ancient Chinese but, secret, huh? But that must have been even more punk rock, like back in the seventies, to barefoot water ski, because uh, uh, you'd have you'd have to you know swing out and drop a ski and, and long line. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, See, I did that, and we also had we had jet skis. We had the original nineteen seventy four Kawasaki stand up jet skis. Jet skis, yeah. That were one was a four hundred cc that we bored out and made it four forty. And, <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, I had a matched pair. So and, well, so the uh, the the story. I'm I heard, waiting. I'm waiting to see how this. Oh, okay. How this so, is, so, 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 I think he's dodging it for a for a reason. <laughs> uh, he's he's driving home with mom after a fine day of water skiing. That's right. Just driving on home, and the story I've always heard is just out of nowhere dad says will you marry me and uh mom had this whole it's like hands on the wheel hands attended <laughs> yeah, to yeah yeah and then uh mom mom had this clever response that she had like in the bag but in the moment she was so surprised she said you know i will <laughs> uh and it and it, that was the that was the story i heard growing up the whole time the fairy yeah. tale story yeah and, that, and that's what happened when i got back from the beach that morning i looked at myself in the mirror and i said well why don't you just go ahead and ask her to marry well turns out in my mid-20s i got a little bit more of the story okay <laughs> Which is dad, dad, dad was high as a kite <laughs> driving and blurted out, will you marry me? Mom said, you know, I will. And after a few seconds, dad didn't know whether or not he had actually said it. <laughs> no, no, no. She, mom was the one oh, that oh, didn't sorry, know. Sorry, mom was blazed. <laughs> because it's dead silence for about, it's dead silence for about, Ten minutes. So she's high. <laughs> yeah. And so we get to the apartment and I say, Vicki Brushwood, that sounds pretty good to me. It, she goes, it- <laughs> <laughs> 
And she couldn't remember if she said anything, let alone yes. Uh, did he really ask me? You know? Wow. wow. And they always say the weed sucked back then. <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently not. So uh, you guys. Pick up to old weed. <laughs> you guys waste no time. So at this point, you have a stable job. Uh, is mom working as well? Or is she is she uh, immediately well, getting into Mrs. She, she had been a secretary for the American Cancer Society in San Diego. And uh, after uh, we got married three weeks after uh I asked her to marry me. Oh, wow. So this is a, a hurry up offense. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so we get a uh, apartment down in Huntington Beach. Okay. And uh, I have to commute to downtown L.A. for what was supposed to be three months. And what a miserable drive that so was. So you're commuting from San Diego. Uh, no, no, no. no from, Huntington from, from Beach. Huntington Beach. Yeah. yeah. Into downtown L.A. Gotcha. And, and what, took, is that, what is that commute? Uh, it was 45 minutes to an hour. Jesus. And, uh, so it's like, even though there are way fewer introduction cars, to news radio. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's all, that's all you got that and the, the, the eight tracks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, wait, so, but I was born in Fountain Valley, which is right next to San Diego. It, I mean, to Huntington, Huntington Beach. Beach. Okay, it's, so you were li you were living in Huntington Beach, and right. then, uh, but but the hospital happened to be in Fountain Valley. Right. I and, see. And uh, we were going to wait five years, and three <laughs> months later, she was pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> so does does mom immediately make the decision to to go full mom, or uh, I mean, I guess she has no, to. She, uh, she uh, got a job uh, for. Rockwell and uh, worked on, or the team that she was with was working on the uh, Mars Rover version one or Voyager wow. or something. Huh? Yeah, Voyager, pro pro probably space, the, deep space nine. Uh, no. uh, prob probably the Voyager probe. No, I guess they launched that earlier. I don't know. Um, but uh, that's pretty wild. Uh, I, 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 I'm almost certain mom would have mentioned it, but uh, uh, 20 something years later, uh, that was that was my second job was at Rockwell testing video games for the for the sound card they were making at the time. Uh, uh, so okay, so you you start uh, what rising through the ranks at uh, Douglas Oil? Yeah, when we uh, when I got promoted to the supervisor of that exchange accounting group, and there was also retail accounting, which was the 400 stores we had, and there were two supervisors of that, and I said, you don't need to hire anybody for that job. I can do both these jobs. So that's what I did. And they didn't give me any more money. But I was about I to say, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, no, no cheddar, just credit. Yeah. And, uh, but that's, that's the can do attitude that I'm sure gives you a good reputation internally. That's right. And in fact, when I had the interview, the guy asked me, do you know how to run a 10 key calculator? I said, I can learn. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the equivalent of touch typing, right? Where yes. it's just like, uh, yeah, yeah, were you able to look at numbers and not be looking at your fingers yes, dancing up and absolutely. down the keypad? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so so you do that for how long before the first uh, uh, offer to move? Or was it an well, offer? Was it a demand to move? No, no. It. Uh, I became supervisor of our manager of financial accounting for Douglas and uh, had about 50 people working for me. And this would have been in 78, this, 79. This, uh, one of my earliest memories, I think, would have been around 1979. I remember you taking me into the office and letting me play with the punch cards that uh, like the the unused ones that were sitting around, and then you explained to me like these are computer programs, son. <laughs> and uh, uh, that was that's yeah. We had key punch operators that would you would fill out the forms and send it to the computer department, and they would key in all the stuff. It wasn't Fortran, so I had it under there control. You go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and then uh, and so uh, uh, why why did we move to Houston? Well, uh, I had gone into the planning side in uh, Douglas, and uh, the guy who ended up being the CEO of Conoco was also the executive vice president 
at Douglas, and I had a lot of work directly with him. Well, he got promoted back to Houston, and uh, he put the, floated my name into this uh, logistics and downstream planning group that I came into. See, and, none, none of this sounds like speech giving, right? No, the, the, right. The, this is this is the stuff I, I heard. And and so so when I would hear uh, like now we're getting into parts I remember, you know, third, fourth, fifth grade where dad would go out for for four to six weeks at a time. Uh, wh wh where 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 was the first international trips you went and where all have it you was, been? It was in uh, 1980 after we had moved to Houston and uh, we had a, dom a domestic and an international side to the uh, planning organization. And my boss had to go to a meeting on the international side and it was me and another guy that he had to choose from, so it was a coin toss, <laughs> and, I, and I won the coin toss. <laughs> Look at that! What, and so, and, what was it like to, in a pre-internet era? Because uh, I, I mean, I guess uh, you got phone calls you can make, but but outside of that, communications are what all just phone calls. Do you are you mailing letters and waiting days for stuff to come and go, or? Uh, well, there was uh, telexes, yeah, faxes, and. That kind of thing, but uh, a lot of phone work. And, and and what are some of the countries that you went to? Well, I ended up getting out of the logistics and downstream planning and went to the shale oil company, which we closed down because it price of oil it was never ever going to Because they hadn't invented money. fracking yet? <laughs> yeah, and then I came back down and got into the exploration production side of the business, and that's where my travels really began. And I uh, uh, was in charge of the finance for the uh, uh, worldwide exploration program, not the totally in charge, but I had a big section of it that – all the exploration companies like the garden spots of the Congo, Angola, Gabon, Tunisia, mm -hmm. Somalia, uh, Indonesia. Uh, and I would fly out there and just show the face. And well, so what is exploration? To... It sounds like a doomsday. Oh, uh, exploration. <laughs> exploration. Exploration. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I heard exploration. exploration does sound pretty bad. <laughs> it's, it's just like yeah. you have 100 days to make your um, quotas. <laughs> so you're so you're taking these these trips and you're just kind of like a diplomatic emissary. You're just like, <laughs> hey guys, what's up? I'm well, here. That's, that's what I found out on Sundays. Well, I tell them why they need to fill out. You know, the information for the cash and earnings forecast yeah. and how we rely on that. And in 86, uh, the price crude fell from 30 some odd down to 10 bucks. Uh, so we had to beer. stop Jeez. spending this is money. 36 ah. cents a gallon. So was, we, yeah. Was. yeah, we... Uh, we severely hampered uh, the, the international operations. The international outreach. Yeah. Uh, you are saying a lot of words that are only processing in my mind as, man, those sound like great nights at airport bars or hotel <laughs> bars. <laughs> Uh, can also, you confirm? Can you nothing, confirm or deny that those were some good nights in hotel or airport bars? Uh yes. Many of my trips to London though was in the West End. Yeah, and we'd stay at the uh, Churchill Hotel, and right next to Hyde Park, and yep. terrific food and. It was, were, were you it was, only it was tough were, duty. Were, were you yeah. only <laughs> flying business class uh, for all these gigs? Correct. Oh. Smoking still, I did, I did. so smoking still on the planes. <laughs> yeah. How is that the yeah. most impressive yeah. part of the entire episode? Because <laughs> because I've I've traveled to many countries as well, but a magician does not get to go in business, <laughs> business class. class. <laughs> no, no, he's sitting in a seat with a with an ashtray the size of most of the seats in coach now. Like, <laughs> but do you I, fall uh, into it? It's <laughs> marble. Like I'm like I'm like I went on a 14 hour flight. I got one Heineken. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, I, Disney uh, rips through a carton <laughs> next to you. Like <laughs> my my most memorable flight is from uh, Cairo to uh, Mogadishu, and that's because it was on a seven oh seven, which 
if you know that's a really old plane. Yeah. <laughs> and so was that, I, I can imagine how rattling that it, some bitch was. From, and it's Somali Airlines or some off brand. And uh, I'm flying in first class and it's a nighttime flight. And I get up to go to the restroom and the two pilots and the stewardesses and everybody is standing there talking. I walk in, one of them jumps up and runs back into the cockpit. (laughs) 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 Uh, So that was memorable. (laughs) Man, pre (laughs) 9-11. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, did, did did you ever keep a tally of how many countries you visited, like a, a running number? I guess you'd have to. Uh, well, I kept my passports. Oh, got it. So you got and, all the stamps on there. Uh, you could take that tour whenever you want. Yeah, I've got a couple of uh, my agendas, calendars that I could go back and reflect on. But why? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so. I, I guess we we moved to Houston because of uh, Conoco, and then we moved to Colorado because uh, th- there is a lot of shale oil in in the Rocky Mountains. But it was it turned out to be an unprofitable attempt at the time to to extract it. But nowadays the story is different. Our plan was to uh, uh, crush the rock, heat it up get the oil to come out and capture it. So we spent $100 million on a pilot plant that produced 300 barrels of oil a day. Oh, God. <laughs> and, Yipes. So that wasn't going to work. Uh, so and then we moved back to Houston for a bit. And I guess at this point, they know that, that you're game to relocate and that you're a team player. And so the opportunity to move to Norway comes up because I guess it was new at the time that Norway was opening up offshore drilling. Is that what it was? Well, we were we were uh, developing the Hadron oil field in Norway. God, that sounds so, so that sounds like a Bond villain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was a geologist. So he, oh, he God. Yeah. Geologist. I am a geologist, Mr. Bond. <laughs> With one press of a button, I can detonate all the oil in the planet. Now, see here, Bond, you'll have to infiltrate the Hadron oil field. <laughs> oh, sounds like Norwegian. <laughs> it is. So, oh. so the anyway. worst Bond ever. <laughs> we should write our Anyway, you, <laughs> Bond, you should take a plane. Uh, I was playing hard. Stowed the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we, uh, you say yes. Uh, how how did mom take it when you're like, uh, who wants to go to Norway? <laughs> uh, no, she was actually in California oh, with no, you guys. I, yeah. Oh, I remember when she and, got the call. And uh, I said, we're moving to Norway. <laughs> oh, you just you just said this is how it's gonna be. And, and, she, said, and she was like, please let me be high. Please let me be high. <laughs> <laughs> was she was, was that was that a tough sell? Was that it was it a hard move? Uh it was and it was both Jay and Brian were in tears because they didn't want to leave Katy, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also we're we're like at that middle school age where oh, it sucks. You're, you're it sucks starting, to move, yeah. Because yeah. you have friends and everything, and they're like your best friends in the world because you've never had friends before. But it was it was the greatest time for them. Absolutely. Uh, uh, best best thing to happen in my life uh, very likely directly responsible for me being comfortable with life on the road touring and all that stuff uh, just you being know. in an area that oh yeah like that, you had, that, to, adju- that, 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 had hey, to adjust everything to. is different i remember when this was awful but it became great and my favorite thing and then i was sad to move back to the united states and so yeah. now it's just that every 48 hours on a gig yeah he did uh, his first MC job in Norway at the Stavanger American School. Yeah, they had something called Coffee House. And again, pre internet, it's like, hey, a bunch of seventh graders are going to try to do a talent show. You know, packed house, 500 people, because yeah. what else is on? Sure. The Cosby show on, <laughs> on, on cable, if you're lucky. Uh, but uh, what'd yeah. you do? 
What was what was what was? Uh, I'll ask. I'll ask uh, well, Dad his, here. What his, was what was Brian's talent? His, his big moment was after the first graders left. Yeah, he had to grab the microphone and raise it up. He said, "This is probably the only time in my life I get the opportunity to increase the height of the microphone." Did it kill? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did it kill? I bet you that kills. I bet you the audience loves it. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, it made it made an impression. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, my first ad lib. Live on stage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. So so we moved back to, to, to Houston. And then uh, did you have opportunities to move before I went to college? Because I, I went to college and you guys were like, three, two, one, and get bent, America. We're going to Venezuela. Yeah, I, uh, I would have had opportunities, but uh, I told them we wanted to stay through high school for the kids. So uh, there was probably a London job that might have oh, been out there. Oh, man. Part yeah. of me wishes that you'd take that. I wouldn't have minded yeah. graduating <laughs> in London. Well. Well, see here, Bond. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then so then you take an, an opportunity to go to Venezuela. Uh, yeah, I come back and I'm uh, working on this uh, Global Excellence Program, where yet again we need to reduce the size of the organization yep. and find all the duplication that you know explorers do all this work, and then they throw the project over the wall to the production department. They do all the same work, but the engineering way, yeah, <laughs> as opposed to the geologist way. And uh, anyway, we went through and cut out about thirty percent of our job positions. Oh, wow. And after that, I was, uh, uh, I was the agenda manager for the four vice presidents that we had in the exploration ah, you production. Were back to running the boats for the Admiral. Were you? That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. And all that engineering I took in school was great because I could understand and talk to engineers. I but could you didn't have to do none of it. <laughs> financial issues gotcha. to, to ways they understood it. And anyway, it was a big uh, change in what we how we wanted to work and how we wanted to communicate in the company. And so I did that for about five years, and then. Uh, I, I I do remember uh, a couple of times we visited Venezuela. Dad saying like, "Oh boy, this uh, Hugo Chavez guy seems to be coming in. Uh, it seems like trouble, if you ask me." <laughs> yeah. So you were there as as the rise to Hugo Chavez yeah, we happened. Moved, we moved down there in '96, and he gave he came in in '98. And we, I left and retired in 2000. So, <laughs> GTFO'd. Yeah. yeah. So when does he, when does he nationalize everything? Uh, I want to say like 2003 or 2003. Slowly, so it was, yeah. it was on, on the march to that. You could see the yeah. writing on the wall. Yeah. In fact, uh, we had borrowed like three and a half billion dollars, first public offering for a project in Venezuela. And, uh, we had all these commitments from them that we would not be subject to this one kind of tax. Yeah. And they uh, tried Called to taxis. screw us on it. Yeah. And I wrote a uh, one of my better letters. <laughs> you wrote to the Venezuelan government? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> like, senior. Dear assholes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I mean, senior I'm assholes. I'm to the bondholders, <laughs> and they're not going to like that. <laughs> Uh, so, so did they, did they end up taking a major loss on all that or, or I guess you're retired now. What do you care? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> it's like yeah, gonna, I mean, uh, we finally, we spent three and a half billion dollars in three and a half years and built a oil field pipeline, refining and offshore mm -hmm. loading facilities, which now benefits how's, how's the glorious now? people of Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's now the home of many, many rats. <laughs> yes, it, it is, uh, the whole oil industry has just collapsed. They, uh, it used to, it was based on a meritocracy when I went down there. They were trying to uh, really get back into the uh, swing of commercial uh, free enterprise kind of thing. And then Chavez comes in and says, no, we don't want to do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I want to, I want to be the thug. <laughs> so uh, when you, when you come home and retire, uh, 
uh, dad goes full time. Would it be fair to say that uh, dad spent uh, the bulk of his early 50s as a full time job setting up the most epic party pad to attract his his 20 something children to bring all of their friends? Uh, <laughs> and it uh, worked. Uh, yeah. Three and, and a half acres this? on the San Bernard River south of Houston, Texas. OK. Uh, with a full guest house, and uh, uh, that's where we would uh, we learn to barefoot water ski and uh, uh, and shuffleboard so courts. That, that was that was the goal. The goal was just like let's let's make a rad place that we like to be, but also we'll we'll get the kids down here. Yeah, and uh, it was fun. It worked for a yeah, long time. We had three kegerators. Yeah, <laughs> three kegerators. <laughs> yeah, good God. <laughs> Then, uh, then, then we, it got way hard to make the three and a half hour drive once we started popping out babies. Uh, yeah. And then, then you guys relocated to Austin yep. and, uh, and, and it brings up here. Uh, do, do you have any, um, do you have any wild, uh, one-off tales from, from, uh, uh that we've missed on the journey? Uh, no, we had a, uh, a professional barefoot skier come down and spend the weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, Paul, like a champion. Uh, yeah, Paul yeah. Stokes. Paul Stokes. Paul Stokes. Yeah. Did he like show any like players to Brian? All right. Like, did he like train Brian? Let's wrap Brian? it up. So he's uh, a professionally uh, uh, trained Al barefoot Bushwood, water skier. My dad. The uh, rat thank you so much. son of a much. fucking bitch. Thank you so <laughs> much for joining us and sharing so much more of your story. I loved how much I got to learn. God damn uh, it. I love that this has been laid. This betrayal has been laid. I, 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 I love you, Dad. You just, no, just whatever. No, <laughs> thank you. Brian. Professionally trained barefoot water skier. Just cut it, cut it. <laughs> Thanks for the money, dog. Appreciate the guapuccino, baby. Well, that was exciting. That was good. <laughs>